okay? Great. So I'm David Pavitt. I'm a data scientist at Elliptic, and thanks for the introduction, Tom. Um, fun fact, I created my profile pic there using AI. Um, so I've started using those large language models. Well, not language models. But. Um, so this is a 20-minute talk, so I'm just going to blaze over a bunch of different topics, and it's a bit of a challenge to keep it into 20 minutes. Um, and I start with what is blockchain. So I normally give talks to like very basic people, like blockchain 101 to banks and government, but also on the other scale to people who only work in crypto. So this is going to be in the middle. Um, just a show of hands, who, who here owns crypto? So there you go. It's kind of what I expected maybe a bit more, but uh, yeah. So normally when I go, people say, what do you do? I work in crypto. You tend to like split the room in half. You get people like on the left who are like, oh, I hate crypto. And then you get other people who just like love it. So maybe we'll find some middle ground here today. Um, so I'll start off with, um, uh, you know, everyone should know that blockchains are public ledgers, so it allows you to send money from A to B, and it records like the amount and the time. And you know, all of those transactions build the graph, um, so similar to like the last talk I was talking about. So you have all this data, and it's like publicly available um, of all these different transactions. Um, and the other thing you should know that if you don't know about crypto is that uh, the addresses are anonymous, and we, we call it pseudo-anonymous. So it's similar to an email address. You know, email address doesn't have to have your name in it. It's just a bunch of, sh it's a string, and you have a secret password. In crypto, you have, a, you have a Bitcoin address or a crypto address that doesn't mean anything, doesn't have your name in it, and you also have the private key. So my work at Elliptic, how do we use um, blockchain analytics? Well, this is like the, uh, the official line. So Elliptic uses a combination of public on-chain data and proprietary address attribution to de-anonymize de the blockchain. What does that mean? All right, so we go from this. So we have the blockchain, it's a really messy graph, all these unknown addresses sending all over the place. Um, and we try and make it into this. So here you have like nice labeled entities and you can see where the money's flowing to. So you might know that one from the bottom right was a long time ago, like a dark, a dark market, Silk Road. So we have people who go on and like maybe like, um, you know, pretend to buy drugs and illegal weapons and we get their Bitcoin addresses and then we can mark it down. And then we can use algorithms to like, understand the patterns. So the users at Silk Road will eventually have to cash out in exchange. So we can kind of follow the money. And we interact with exchanges like Coinbase, Crypto.com, get their addresses, and then I build heuristics to look at their patterns. And we can build the labels for the blockchain. And then blockchain analytics allows us to, you know, you can take an address. We can say who it is, where's the money come from. And that's really useful for like, people who want to work in like, regulated environments. Um, um, and this is like you know, some of our customers and the tagline for Elliptic there. So why, why do I come here to talk about it? So I maybe was thinking some people here, maybe early in their career, maybe this is a sector that you may want to go into. It's probably not talked about very much. Um, and I think it's that I'm going to talk about the growth opportunities I think there is in crypto and how it's getting more and more complicated. So there's a greater, greater need for data science. So on the left, bottom left, or the left side, you can see in like an investigation from last year looking at a crypto scam on Twitter, and it's just getting so complicated. So you know, if you have a good understanding, perhaps graph analytics or algorithms, you might be able to you know, work on this kind of stuff. And crypto is getting more complex. If, if, if anyone's into it, they know there's a lot of tokens, currencies, and lots of text changing. So I'm going to start off by just explaining a little bit about um, some examples of blockchain analytics, uh, whilst at the same time maybe giving you examples of why I think crypto will be a growing uh, ecosystem. So these are taken from a state in crypto report. So first of all, I've got a plot here. You can see active addresses. So you can see active addresses over time are going up, even if the price is going down and up, or like lately the price is in a bit of a low. So how, do you, how could you calculate this? The active addresses, you take an address and you look have they sent or received tokens in, say, a week or a month, and then you get your monthly or weekly active users. And you can see that's been increasing over time. It's like all-time highs. Also, we've got, there's many types of crypto. Not everything's so volatile. So you may not know the same called stable coins, which is, these are pegged to $1 or, or some other um, real-world currency. And the usage of these are going up over time. It's very popular in places like Latin America, Africa, Asia, where their, their actual real currencies are unstable. Active developers, so we had, we had bull markets in crypto in 2022, also like back at the end of 2017. So people get attracted and start working in crypto, but they don't tend to leave even once the like, money has gone back down. Um, so you can see here the developers are staying, and this is tracked by looking at the GitHub repositories. Um, and also academia, so after like say the last bull market in 2016, 17, academia really started to notice it, and that there's another example of how 
it's becoming more, it's, it's, you know, it's here to stay, academia is talking about it. And finally, uh, I think it's the last one, job, job interest. So you can see people are now, you know, you can really see the peak in 2022 where people really wanted to get into crypto, and that's like when I joined crypto, so I'm at the top of that peak. Um, oh, and a future one which I've talked about is, I think, gaming. So I, I know there's quite a lot of gaming companies in London, and um, this could be another way to onboard more users. Imagine all your in-game purch in purchases are done via crypto, or your in-game items, your sword, your, your receipt of completing that quest. These could all be NFTs or, and traded or shown off with other people. So I think this could be a real growth sector as well. So I'll talk about my history briefly. Um, yes, yeah, so like Tom said, I, I, you know, during my PhD back in the day, I was mining Bitcoin because I had free electricity. And I, I got, got a few Bitcoins and sold them for $100 and went on holiday to a Greek island. And I thought I was really clever. You know, and today it's worth 50K or whatever. Um, but yeah, then I, then I kind of ignored crypto for like 10 years or so, working in government and mobile gaming. And these are popular industries in London as a data scientist. And I got back into it again during COVID and started learning about how there's like you can deploy code and it's a decentralized computer. These kind of concepts interest me. I also, as I'll talk about later, I started building dashboards and doing like small bits of research. Um, started getting paid for that and eventually went full time. So I'll, I'll share some ideas perhaps that you could do if you're interested in doing the same and building like a portfolio if you're new in data science. Um, so some pros I think about working, uh, choosing to use your data science skills in uh, crypto is it's easy access to big data. So like the blockchain is public. There's no like restriction or paywall. Um, anyone can run a blockchain node normally in most blockchains um, and you get access to the data. It used to fit on a laptop but now the blockchains like most like Ethereum and Bitcoin are like terabytes, but I'll show you there's places where you can use SQL to like, you know, get the data for free. The middle column, you know, there's lots of domains. Crypto is sprawling now into web Metaverse, Web3, financial trading. So I think it, it could be a good place to look for um, work jobs or, you know, potential startup. And as I described, I think it's a rapidly growing industry. So the first thing you may want to do if you're looking to get into this, uh, uh, check out these websites, Dune Analytics and Flipside Crypto. They host the data for you, and you can um, use an SQL. You can write any query you like on the blockchain data, and also they also allow you to publish your own dashboards that you can share with the world. Um, so these are great places. So there's an example of a dashboard there. You can, if you're interested in some crypto project or some NFT, whatever, you could like look at the analytics, and you know that'd be a great way to showcase your data science skills or at least your like visualization skills. And that metrics DAO at the bottom right, that hosts competitions, which is how I got started. So people will like, have bounties and they'll pay money for people who want to say how many people have used my product or, my or things like what do people do when they bridge their tokens to my ecosystem. So it's a good place to look. Um, price prediction is like another popular area you might want to do as like a hobby um, or if you, if you work into finance. So this is like the oldest model that's been around a long time. I like It's called the Bitcoin rainbow um, and it's a simple uh, regression and you can see all the y-axis is a logarithmic scale. And what I like about this model is they've labeled all these things as like basically a fire sale buy. So, so we're actually, according to this model, uh, we're, we're in a really good time to buy. Um, it's here, not financial advice, but that's what this model says. <laughs> And then you should sell. So if you look back in like last year, 2022 was in like the FOMO and seriously sell sort of period. But I think this makes a strong case that if it is an exponential growth, that's what the price could look like. Um, yeah, so like within a few years, hundreds of thousands. All right. Um, so if you're interested in trading as well, like I think it's a great place to potentially work. So there's like there's 25,000 plus tokens and 500 plus exchanges. Um, according to like coin market cap, and some of those are decentralized as well, so there's like no paywall, and it's easy to get the data. So if you're, I, I have no experience in this, but I know that lot, this is like a real growth area, and it, if you've got like algorithmic trading experience or looking to get into that, you should consider, I think, a crypto. And here's an example of um, oh, on the bottom right there. If you start start here, Ethereum, you could then swap Ethereum for this other one called XRP, then swap that for Bitcoin. Bitcoin to ETH thing back, back around. These are actually like, uh, you can model these. If each edge is like how much you gain or lose in that transaction or swap, it's the shortest path problem. So you, look, you, you sum up all the different combinations. There's like 25,000 tokens and all the exchanges. And you look for arbitrage where you can make these kind of swaps and eventually uh, make a profit um, if, if the sum is negative. Yeah. Right. So this is quite a project I've worked on a lot, is um, tracing funds through mixers. So a mixer is what maybe a criminal would use to try and hide their trail. So the people on the left, so I've got a, a, B, and C, three people are putting their money together, 
and then they're putting one ETH in this case, which is Ethereum, and then spreading out. We can't tell that the wallets on the right, that each person has created two wallets, an input and output, and we can't tell who belongs to who because they've all mixed their money. So it's like giving some, three people giving someone pound coins, he mixes them up and gives them back three pound coins. Like who's a who's, it's a good way to mix. And we've got some like statistical analysis kind of techniques where to say, mostly looking at timing. So some people use them wrong. They'll either like do a transaction from A to D, which like shows there's a direct link, or you know, lots of transactions in a short period of time. Or we, we follow like North Korean hacker groups. That all, they have like tens of millions, hundreds of millions, and they're pumping it for a mixer where everyone else is like, mixing one or two Bitcoin, and they're putting 10,000. It's easy to see, or easier to find out where their money's going. Also, when you're looking at these unknown addresses, you might so there's some things you can do to just figure out who they are. So hit on the top bar, I've got an example of a crypto exchange in Asia and one from Europe on the bottom there. And just simple graphs of the time of day uh, can show that one of them is clearly, unless people would like sleep unusual hours, you can start doing some geographical locations. And you can also do the same. So we look at a lot of Russian activity. Um, and like when you take the Bitcoin amount and convert it to like th their currency, it, it equals like 100 or 1,000 round numbers. So you can use this kind of stuff to understand geographically locate you know, an unknown Bitcoin address. Um, this is something that I actually use recently. So there's this, if anyone's interested in trading like this, um, these graphs are graphs that show out of a token what percentage is owned by one person. So on the right, you've got 95% being owned by this big bubble, whereas the one on the left, these Pepe tokens, were owned by a much larger distributed group. So the one on the right is more likely to be a scam because if one person owns all of the tokens, they can just set, sell them and dump the price, whereas the one on the left is more um, distributed. Um, so you can like use this kind of analysis. This is created by bubblemaps.io. You can put any token in. You can see, I I is it like evenly distributed or is it you know, owned by one person at risk of being a scam? Mm -hmm. uh, and you can also look at other, you know, other uses, metrics. NFTs, so there's a, some work we did last year, or maybe a year and a half, um, looking at NFTs. So actually, you, you can really build up hype for your NFT project by, imagine you create two addresses and you're just trading it between yourself. It looks like, oh, this NFT is really popular, like people are bidding and bidding, but it's a bit like early day of eBay or like fake reviews. So there's some stuff we can do to look at, again, timings. Are, are these real transactions, or is it the same person buying their own NFT to make it look like hyping it up? So if you're like an NFT, if you're interested in NFTs, you could like using those tools I showed you, you could start looking at the data to try and figure out what is a valid NFT collection to bid on. Um, this is one of our bigger ones we do. So this is like classification. So you use machine learning to kind of to identify what type of address it is. If we don't know what it is, we can um, try and use our labeled labeled addresses, and then we do a lot of feature engineering. So I've calculated things like I say here, like time between transactions, a variety of tokens the address uses number of hops it used to, to certain place, transaction fees, and, and it actually gives you good success. And you can identify things like dark web market, NF tree trader, a long term holder, hodler. So you can then build up a profile of different addresses. Um, if anyone knows a bit about Ethereum, you can deploy code onto the blockchain. Um, so this is an example of some code, and it gets compiled down into bytecode. Um, so often, when we're like, looking at investigations, we're trying to understand what does this code do. So like most reputable projects will publish their code on GitHub, and you can compile it and see it matches the bytecode. But what if we don't know what this code is? Is it something like the criminals are using? So we've used um, so there's, there are some academic papers on using NLP techniques to break this like, bytecode into n-grams and, and build a model on it. Because there's, there's lots of verified contracts we know. We can decompile them, compile them, um, and then be able to Build a, put a classifier on top. I did it and had mixed results. Um, like it wasn't good enough to put in the product. But you know, if you had large, if you use these kind of deep neural networks and larger models, you might. This is something that you'd probably be able to do. Understand what this code is that's been deployed on the blockchain, what it does, just from looking at the bytecode. Um, and another one <coughs> that would be good if, if you're getting into this is this website, Forta. So it allows you to, it has all the blockchain data, and you can build a machine learning model, and you can upload it onto the website. And then uh, it, you, other people can then take the, the stream. So you build a model that, say, de detects risk. Maybe it's like um, 
loads of money flying to one place really quickly. You, you have some idea or build a model based on data, and you can upload it to this website, um, and it's like a community-based tool. So that's something I'd give a shout out to, um, and we started taking some of the like feed from that to indicate what is a illicit activity in the blockchain. So here I've summarized some of the resources there, um, and I think I did a great job at speeding through that in 15 minutes. Um, and you've got my email address there, or I'll be at the back if you want to ask me any more in detail questions. As a Thank you. Thanks, David. We do have time for maybe one, possibly two quick questions, if you've got anything for him. Uh, yeah, thank you. It was, uh, it was great, very entertaining. And Thanks. Um, you mentioned th there are some tools for um, accessing the blockchain because it's open data. So if someone wanted to like dive in, what's the best way to make yeah, a start? Yeah, these top two ones are doing analytics. So you, because it's so large, you can write SQL to get a subset of that data. So I'd try those websites. And there's also APIs. There's all, all of these tend to have free plans, but when you start getting like terabytes of data, they'll charge you. But um, for most use cases, that's they're the ones to go. Question? Sorry, oh, sorry. Uh, sorry, I'm trying to do <laughs> the buttons. I'm not doing anything very well. Thank you so much. Multitasking. Uh, thank you for the presentation. And according to the examples, it seems like mostly is the graph algorithms for fraud detection use cases. Is there any other problems for? methodologies in this space right now that's popular? Yeah, I, I don't use graph algorithms. Like, putting into graph database, we've tried it, it tends to break stuff. But yeah, I think that's a huge growth area. And like, because it's quite a new industry, a lot of the simpler things uh, are yet to be done. So yeah, I'd be interested to hear. Round of applause for Dr. Pav. Thank you.